this is the type of matchup where Soltai can make the matchup very punishing on Elves if they want to, but they have to be bringing the heat. Uh, just a couple spot removal spells is not going to be good enough to have a positive matchup here, but... Uh, you know, you have Jitte, you have access to Toxic Deluge if you want it. There's there's ways to make the matchup very punishing for Elves. Well, there's a Delver of Secrets. Here's a third Deathrite Shaman. So Jim's got a bunch of Knuckleheads in play. Grafdigger's Cage is one of his best cards in the sideboard. You see Abrupt Decay in his hand along with two copies of Tarmogoyf, but not a lot else going on at this point. He does have an answer for Scavenging Ooze, but other than that, not too exciting. And, and Jim's in this weird spot where he kind of can't fire off his removal spell because then the shields are down and and Riley doesn't play around anything. Uh, but if he just sits here and waits, Riley continues to do something with his variety of utility creatures. Scavenging would like to untap and block if possible. It will, so Jim will lose his creature. Pass the turn back. And now Uzu gets the Ether creature, so perhaps maybe a misstep there from Davis. I don't know. In spots like this where you're you're kind of done for, which is kind of how it looks from Jim's side of the table, I like just doing things like that to see if my opponent knows the interactions. Make him see it. Yep. Here comes the Uzu. Abrupt is going to take care of the Delver of Secrets. Not going to let that thing flip into a 3-2 flyer and get to work. Public Entity number one for Elves is, is certainly that card since can't block a flyer. Yeah. Ooze will grow a little bit larger. There's a Pendlehaven. Rather quite a few cards in his hand. He'll just pass the turn back over to Davis. And Davis is going to draw another Tarmogoyf. He'll deploy it. We'll see how big it is here in just a moment. And who's going to remove a Spell Pierce. Currently a 2-3. Potential, of course, to get so much bigger. Ooze is so strong against these Soul Tide decks because the opportunity cost to play, very low, and there's just games like this where uh, as long as he's in play, it's very hard for Jim to utilize much of his creatures at all. Yeah, it'll just run wild in the game. There's not a lot you can do about it. bit of mana, another Elvish Visionary. Draw a card. Now there's a Bayou. Granite player who's been playing Elves for a really, really long time has won an Open Series event with it. So he knows all the interactions of this deck, and there are quite a few. Here comes Scavenging Use. Riley still has to respect the possibility of a sweeper here. Oh, so, for sure. Uh, even though he's got a commanding advantage here, he's not going to be sloppy. Still take his time thinking about how he wants to go about his business here. Yeah, probably Toxic Deluge is something you have to be worried about. Especially in conjunction with Tarmogoyf. I mean, that's a way to catch up very quickly from Jim's side of the table. We can see Jim's hand, Wasteland, two Tarmogoyfs, and Abrupt Decay, so we know he doesn't have that. But Riley does have to tread a little bit carefully because that's one of the few ways he can lose this game. Yep. Jim with two copies of Marsh Casualties in his sideboard. Sure. So this is a sideboard game. Still a tough spot here for Jim. He needs to keep up some pretense of having interaction that matters, though. His hand doesn't offer much. He does have an abrupt decay to get the scavenging use off the table. But at that point, Riley gets to go wild with Symbiote plus Elvis Visionary. So really tough set of circumstances here for Jim. There's Wasteland. Here's Tarmogoyf. And now just a passing of the turn. What's very easy for Elves to do, however, is to just gum up the ground so you can never make a good attack. Yep. It's almost its specialty, honestly. Who's is going to remove some cards from the graveyards here? Karan will draw. Whole boatload of cards in his hand. The only thing he doesn't really have at this point is a cradle. Might be the only thing that's missing from what's otherwise a very good draw.
who's the boss coming on in. And now Jim's in this horrible bind of having to chump block for them to just be more food for the ooze. Deathrite Shaman looks like it's going to get in the way. There will be an activation of the Shaman. And Karan can stop it from happening if he'd like with a single green mana. And it looks like he will. So Deathrite Shaman bites the dust. It's kind of easy to forget how good Scavenging Ooze is in Legacy. Yep. Just has these moments of, you know, again, Scavenging Ooze has it at its worst is still not the end of the world. And there's so many matchups like this where if it goes unchecked, it's very hard for the other person to play Magic. Yeah. Current Ranger activation will untap the Dryadar, will allow Riley to pick up the Bio. He replays the Bio, so that'll be his land for the turn. Discard a couple of cards. Just simply pass the turn back over to Davis. Davis will draw a Tropical Island. I mean, this does allow Jim to abrupt decay, the ooze, and play Tarmogoyf, which is at least sort of a starting point. Yeah. Four or five Tarmogoyf now. Two of them, in fact. That happened fast. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take much. Davis is going to deploy another time away. See if he wants to make any attacks here, though. Looks like he's just content. Making no attacks. There's no real good ones there, given the Queer Rangers and the Wirewood Symbiotes that are in play. Grand does just pick up an Elvish Visionary at the end of turn so he can recast it here and get deeper into his deck. Scavenging is going to come down. Grand with a couple Queer and Ranger activations. Discard a card, just pass the turn back. Let's see what Jim's able to pick up this turn. It's a Delver Secrets. And now again, Jim back in the same spot where his graveyard's just of no help to him. Yep. And the use is going to get very large very quickly. I mean, Riley even has Glimpse plus stuff in his hand. but that's He's his, not doing any of it. That's his backup plan in case something goes wrong. Yeah. He's not doing any of those things at this point. Uh, Tyron McGoyf may have shrunk a little bit in that exchange. You can see Jim's going to change in size down to a 2-3. Here comes the use. Jim not ready to chump block just yet. He's gonna have to start doing that next turn if he doesn't find an answer for the use. Visionary, draw a card. Metal Sentinel. Heard in catacombs. And there's even leftover visionaries in hands yeah. too. Riley's I mean Riley's hand is capable of probably killing this turn if he went for it. But there's just no rush. Yeah. I mean, he's a 23. He's got a built-up board. As you mentioned, there is no reason to really deploy anything else. Karan going to sacrifice his Vern Catacombs. Go get himself a basic forest. A lot of moving parts here. It looks like Scavenger is going to remove some stuff in the graveyard. Yeah, this is just get, a, get the Tarmogoyfs down as low as possible and make sure Deathrite Shaman has no food. Yep. So that the other creatures can attack profitably. There goes the ooze. Tarmogoyf on jump blocking duty now. Don't see that happen all that much. 
Visionary, draw a card. Hey, a cradle. Uh, and Riley's still not even going to show it, not going to run into the wasteland that's in play. Yep. Death Red Shaman activation, no sir. Lose will remove that Tarmor Voice, so Jim can't gain any life. There's a Brainstorm. That'll flip the Delver into an Insect Tile Aberration. That'll be Davis's draw for the turn. You can see he's going to cast that right away, looking for some help. Two Force of Wolves and a Stifle. Not what we were looking for. Well, yeah, at this point, Jim's got to try to answer the board. Yeah. And Riley with such a high life total to work with here. These Delver hits do not matter for much. Jim, the king of the shoulder shrug. Yep. Loves a good shrug. Yeah. Behemoth then be countered by force of will. Everybody, red zone, and yep, that's going to do it just fine. Riley Coran's going to tie things up here against Jim Davis. Elves and Sultai Delver are going to go to a third game, which means we're going to take a look at some sideboards here very quickly. And we will start with Davis since he's on the play. A Maelstrom Pulse, an Abrupt Decay, two copies of Thoughtseize, a Graft Digger's Cage, a fourth copy of Force of Will, three in the main deck, a Fluster Storm, a Vendillion Click, two Diverts, a Pithy Needle, a Surgical Extraction, two copies of Marsh Casualties, and a Murderous Cut. The big things to stand out to me here are the two copies of Marsh Casualties. Once you get past that, I really like the additional creature removal, the Maelstrom Pulse, the Abrupt Decay, the Murderous Cut. The Graft Digger's Cage is, is solid in this matchup, even though we saw Riley be able to work around it that game. I like the one copy of Vendillion Click. Good disruption, and, and Flyers are a premium against Elves. As you saw there, very easy for Riley to lock up the ground that the board builds up. Other side of things, we've got four Cabal Therapies, two Thoughtseize, four Abrupt Decay, a Sylvan Library, a Scavenging Ooze, a Null Rod, a Meek Stone, and it was Jite. Uh, well, we already know that uh, the old Scavenging Ooze is in the deck, which makes a lot of sense. Abrupt Decay, I wouldn't be surprised to see in there. I don't think the discard is necessary, and I could see it was always Jite in situations where it can be quite good in this matchup. I think Jite is okay. I think Sylvan Library is okay. I think the, the four copies of, the, of Abrupt Decay and the additional Scavenging Ooze, that's what really stands out to me. Well, those are definitely good options. Both players are going to go back to the drawing board a little bit here. Jim looking at those diverts that we saw him use earlier to great effect against Peter Tragos in our round three feature match. Oh, yeah. Good against Abrupt Decay, good against him to Torak. Pretty good against Thoughtseize. Yeah. It's a card, you know, you can only play so many copies, and you probably can't play a main deck, but uh, we might be seeing more of it soon. Well, the Open Series is going to be on hiatus next weekend, but we will talk about the reason why, which is regionals, 14 fantastic locations available. Yeah, I mean, we are just a short week away from this, and you can see all of the venues here, so you can find the one closest to you. Uh, you can head over to starcitygames.com slash regionals to get more information about this event. Open series points, cash prizes, a lot at stake here. Also, at every regional stop, the first 200 people to register will receive our free play map. The squirrels are all together from last year's Creature Collection series, so this is really one of the last chances you guys can get some squirrel-related gear. Squirrel Confidant, Acorn Mystic, Force of Squirrel, and Squirrel Storm all on one exclusive play mat free and available to the first 200 players that do go to regional. StarCityGames.com slash regionals for more information. Plant your flag February 7th. Oddly enough, next weekend. It's almost here. Happened very, very quickly. I mean, before you know it, we'll be talking about uh, spring states. I know. Right around the corner. It's terrifying. Just humming along. It's fun, but it's terrifying at the same time to see time go this fast. But you I've enjoyed it. You live a life full of purpose. The time flies. Every week is about something. That's Either true. a show or you don't have a show, and the weekend matters a lot to you because you don't have a show. That's, tr that's true. I get to do nothing, get to kick back, relax, watch some basketball, mm -hmm. which I will be doing next weekend if I do not attend regionals, along with movies. Play some basketball, another option. Not ever going to happen. That's ridiculous. Why would I do that? Because it's super fun. Debatable on the fun level. See, it's not super fun when you can't shoot. Sure. And see, you're good at shooting, so it's probably a lot of fun for you. Also, you're good at trash talk. Oh, I am a, I am chatty out there. <laughs> so it's oh, probably, yeah. It's probably, I can't trash talk because I'm not. Well, okay, I can trash talk. Anyone can trash talk. Yeah, but it's not good to trash talk if you suck. 
Uh, you know, I, I again, I just don't think that there's really a relationship between the two things. Oh, okay. You can be awesome and keep your mouth shut, or you can be pretty bad and just talk the whole time. I, those are avenues that are available. Yeah. Just not really interested in exploring those. People make that mistake that you have to be good to talk trash, and I just don't think that's true. <laughs> I just never bought into that philosophy. You can just do it. You can just run your mouth. And just agitate someone. Exactly. Very nice. Very nice. I'm going to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I like that. Who even cares if you're good? Exactly. You play a pickup game at the local gym now. Yeah. And probably engage in a fight due to my trash talking. Here's the thing. It's just like anything else in life when you're trying to get good at something. Focus on doing one thing well. Same with Magic. When you first start to play tournament Magic, what's the best thing you can do? Try to focus on mastering one deck and then slowly expand. Sports, any other competitive endeavor, same deal. Should I be trash talking while I'm focusing on getting good with that one deck? Well, you could focus on being good at trash talking. Oh, that's okay, gotcha, gotcha. That's the thing you can do. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. There you go. A Delver of Secrets here for Jim. He'll take a look at the top card. It is flipping, thanks to Abrupt Decay. Riley with a Green Sun Zenith for Dryad Arbor. Though Jim does have a disfigure at the ready. The question is, does he have another land? Oh, uh, Jim's hand is here on Disruption Overload. Two copies of Abrupt Decay, a Spell Pierce, a Craft Digger's Cage. So he's got a good hand. Yes. He's going to be able to, if he wants to, deploy Cage plus Disfigure this turn and then back it all up with Abrupt Decay. Now, the, the issue with Jim's hand here, if Riley goes Untap, Abrupt Decay, your Insect Dial version, Jim does not have a lot going on. Yeah. He has no backup pressure. But if Riley's without a removal spell, Riley's not going to have a lot of time, and he's going to have to slog through a lot of removal. Oh, there's Disfigure. See you later, Dryad Arbor. And now there's the cage. Pass the turn back over to Karan. Karan will draw a Green Sun Zenith. Perfect. Just how we drew it the up. perfect draw. <laughs> Riley will sacrifice the Verdant Catacombs. He'll get a Bayou. But from taking a look at his hand, doesn't look like there's a copy of Abrupt Decay there just yet. That is, of course, assuming that he has him in the deck for game three. I'll just be sure he's not bad, though. This is going to look hard deeper. And it's, it's pretty solid against the removal spells. Davis will untap and draw. Brainstorm is what he's found. He's coming into the red zone for three. Karan down to 13. And now it's a brainstorm. So three cards coming. Couple wastelands among them, not bad. Jim will be brainstorm locked here. Well, the wasteland's pretty nice in this spot. He still has Spell Pierce, which will keep Riley off of most of his dangerous action. He's got Abrupt Decay back up in case Riley adds other permanents to the board. He, cuts, he gets to cut Riley off of Black Mana, so Abrupt Decay is at least off the table for the time being. So yes, he's brainstorm locked, and that was not a great brainstorm, but given the circumstances, not the end of the world. Attack for one with the, uh, with the Visionary. As Alcaran starts to turn, now it's the old Beakstone. Jim's going to take a little look ski -poo. Another in the long line of alpha designs of you don't get to play Magic. <laughs> it's a lengthy list, isn't it? Yes. Stasis, Winter Orb. It's symmetrical, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that going on in alpha. Well, Spell Pierce is going to take care of that from Davis. Doesn't want to have that in play. Wants to be able to keep beating down with this Insectile Aberration, which he's able to do. And now there's Wasteland to take care of the Dryad Arbor. Abrupt Decay at the ready. Karan is going to draw. And was always Chite is what he's found. Here's an attack for one. The question is, does he have another land to play? It doesn't look like the answer is yes. Looks like the answer is just a Nettle Sentinel and a passing of the turn. Davis with an Abrupt Decay and a Tropical Island in hand. See how he wants to use this removal spell. He's going to take care of the Nettle Sentinel. A little dangerous. Pretty aggressive line of play here. And if Riley draws a land here with the Jitte in hand, maybe he has a shot. Although I believe Jim knew that he was sandbagging with an Abrupt Decay on decay. top yep. of his deck. So had some insurance. Deathrite Shaman going to come in. Deathrite Shaman doesn't get to stay in. Bye-bye. Davis will draw. Daze is the draw. Oh. 
And that might do it. I mean, yep. it looked like a land here from Riley might allow him to get to Jute in time, but. And he drew a copy of Cradle, too. That's what I was thinking. Because if, if he was able to top deck a land, he would be able to get to Jute. But that daze, that's the nail in the coffin. Assuming Jim is going to cast the daze, which he. Well, it's an issue of if he wants to pick up a land or not. Sure. And he is. He'll hard cast it. There goes the G tape. And that is going to do it. Jim Davis is going to win this match here over Riley Coran. Two games to one. Salty Devil takes care of L's. And for Davis, in what is a very important tournament for him in the season one race, he's 8-1 and one going into day two. Very important. I, we don't know exactly what happened with Joe Lissette just yet. He was X-2-1 going in the round. So at risk of missing, missing day two altogether, mm -hmm.